players that I liked to uh, copy and emulate. Um, I was never sort of, I suppose, focused enough to learn the complete solo. So I would pick out the bit that to me sounded really good and then I didn't have to learn anymore. It was like, right, well, I've got that bit, I'll use that when, as and when it was appropriate, you know. So that was probably how I developed really, uh, you know, a sound of my own really, just by taking a, a certain element from someone else's stuff, but not the whole lot. I think mainly the, the sort of music that I really sort of reference for, for getting new ideas and inspiration would be uh, sort of kind of 40s, uh, based stuff, so things like early bebop records are great for that. Um, big band records are excellent as well. You know, what you can find in some of these is, is amazing little solos, just 12 bars or something in a in a in a record, and that uh, you've never heard before or since the guy who's uh, done the, done the solo. But you know, it's it's absolutely mind blowing. You think, why have, haven't you heard of this person before? You know, and there are so many examples of that, and it's just sort of a case of almost like going through all of these old records, seeing who the guitar player is and, and having a listen to see if you can pick anything up from you know, a, a rhythm point of view, but also you know, from the solos as well. The beauty of it is you can go all the way back to sort of Charlie Christian and, and the people that came after him, you know, Tiny Grimes, uh, Mary Osborne's great, you know, all those kind of uh, players who were around at the sort of the dawn of the bebop era are, are amazing. Um, and then sort of right up to the modern day, the people that, that sort of influence me now are people like um, Junior Watson and um, Rick Holmstrom and um, players who play in a sort of blues kind of vein, but they also have their own kind of sort of take and quirkiness to it, which, which always interests me. Um, so this guitar is a, a Fremus, and, um, but it's branded uh, Broadway. So I think it's the sort of UK um, sort of brand name for the guitar. Uh, it's it's a, I think sort of late 50s, early 60s model. And um, I bought it as an acoustic, really cheap from a shop window somewhere and um, had a pickup put on it. And um, sort of I restring it with quite heavy strings. Um, I've got 15 to 65 flat rounds on here. So it gives it a bit of a, a you know, a bit of a, a sort of fat tone. And um, that's the kind of sound that I've sort of grown into really and, and enjoy, yeah. Okay, so uh, one of the licks that I like to use if, if I'm playing in, um, in a sort of like a swing blues sort of vein in the key of C would be playing around the C9 chord and then you have the C6 chord here so you can throw in all these kind of crazy licks between those two chords if you like so you sort of get things like um, you know or that kind of stuff. Um, is really is really good. So obviously you can transfer that anywhere you anywhere you like on the fretboard, and that's really good. Um, another one I use is if I was playing in uh, G. Um, I came up with this uh, a few years back, and it was just to try and get a sort of T-bone Walker sort of sound. But I didn't want to play a T-bone Walker thing. I wanted to find something that kind of worked in that sort of vein. So it's a kind of little. Uh, run that I do over the complete 12 bar and it, it sort of goes um, and then over the 4 you get then over the 2 and the 5 you get with one of those on the end. So that, that kind of thing can take you through a verse of 12 bar and then you can go Right, what am I going to do next for your solo? Um, so another, in the key of G again, another uh, line that I have used on um, one of the tracks on my CD is um, based around sort of moving away from the normal kind of area where you'd be playing G and starting in a different place. So it's referencing a different area of the fretboard. So the line which kind of starts over the, the start of the verse would be... Um, And then that goes into the four. Um, so you get that. Then you're referencing this kind of G6. Then uh, this, there's your G. Into the next chord, yeah. Uh, so if we're um, playing a similar kind of swing blues thing in B flat, one of the things that I use here is Again, it's trying to start away from the obvious. 
So I'm moving away from that kind of area. So I play this little line that lasts through the course of the first four bars really. And it's pretty much a run from the top down to that, that uh, six, which is the G. So it goes. And then that kind of leads you nicely into the, into the four. 